All right, here we go. We're going to look at uh, this defrost board real quick. This is a HK31 EA001 defrost board. It's one of the first defrost boards I try to get guys uh, to learn about. It's very simple in its operation. I know we're about to come into the cooling season pretty soon. We're already getting warmer days and chilly nights, so the spring is definitely upon us. But don't forget about the defrost board. We use it and power goes through it even in cooling mode. It's not just for heating season and defrost, okay? So I've already talked before about the main plug terminals over here, uh, how you have your power coming in, your common going back, you've got Y that goes in this board, uh, things of that nature. Uh, we've got plug two on this board, which uh, are these four terminals right here uh, that go in the plug. We've got that T1. Don't forget about T1. T1 is the terminal where power comes off of the contactor coil back to the board in order for us to prove that time has been met. What time are we talking about? We're talking about the 30, 60, 90 minute time down here. Of course, this is field selectable, so we can have a 90 minute compressor run time before the next defrost, 60 minutes, 30 minutes, most guys here in the southeast are going to put this on 30, um, standard stuff, okay? The third plug is going to be right here. That's going to be where our defrost sensor plugs in. Uh, you'll see it labeled right there, DFT. So you'll have two pink wires on a Molex plug that plug into that. And this Y terminal is where Y goes in and Y basically comes straight back out, okay? So don't forget that as we go through the summer months, you're definitely going to need to remember it. Um, like with a lot of circuit boards, you got this big black, I mean, you can see it here, this big bulky relay that's just sitting there. Uh, one guy asked me, he's like, why does this one only have two connection points, but the fan board that you went over for Goodman has three? And I'm like, well, this is a different relay. This particular one, uh, since it's used only to cut power off for the outdoor fan while we're going into defrost, we only have, uh, we, you know, we've got a real simple switch. So we've got a normally closed going to a common connection here. So once we uh, do defrost, then of course that's going to open up, cut the outdoor fan off. This little raised portion right here, you can see, this is where our low voltage switches are for defrost. Okay. This is going to have the switch between R and O and R and W2. Okay. So you can see them over here. Uh, we've got power coming in. Um, it's going to come out on W2 to go back to the air handler to turn on our heat strips to temper the air while we're in defrost mode. So, uh, But that's that switch right here that's going to be involved. So I could pop these off and look at them. Most of the time, heat and air guys don't get concerned with the capacitors and resistors and diodes and stuff. We stick with voltage. Um, inputs and output signals to verify that the board is working correctly. So these little processor guys down here that's uh, actually running things on the board, they've been flashed with their memory. They know what to do. So just remember, time temperature board. Time and temperature will put us into defrost. Time or temperature will take us out. Okay? Can't say it enough. You have to know it's a time temperature board. Every time you see 30, 60, and 90 minutes, that's a time temperature board. Okay? So... What time puts us in defrost? Well, it's that 30, 60, or 90 minutes of compressor runtime. We verify that signal by checking power on T1 to common. We should get 24 volts. If I get 24 volts on T1 to common, then this logic in here uh, is going to be able to register that. How does it, what's the temperature, right? Uh, how does it know to start tracking that time? In this board, the temperature comes first. We register that temperature off of the DFT switch. So we've got those two pink wires. Okay, this is where our coil sensor uh, is plugged into the board. Once the switch closes, power is going to pass out of this terminal year-round, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Okay, and it sits at the coil temperature. When that coil temperature gets cold enough to close the switch, it comes back here, and that will that will complete our temperature requirement. So once the coal gets cold enough, it'll run 30, 60, or 90 minutes, depending on your selection, and go into defrost. Okay? Cumulative time, so 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there, you know, 10 minutes to complete the 30, that's fine. So time or temperature will take us out. What time? 
maximum 10 minute defrost cycle on here. If it's not thawed out by then, we'll just have to do another defrost cycle in 30 minutes. Uh, what temperature? The coil temperature. That same switch that put us into defrost on the DFT will take us out once the coil temperature gets warmed enough, uh, or excuse me, warm enough. So uh, let's go out and do some troubleshooting or some voltage checks on a live unit and uh, you'll see what it is. So see you out there. Ladies and gentlemen, I know we got a few female techs out there. We're going to try to go over this time temperature board real quick. This is a HK32EA001 defrost board. It is a time temperature defrost board, so that means it's real simple. And it is commonly found on Bryant, Heil, Payne units. Maybe a couple more uh, brands out there, but uh, those are probably the most common you'll see this on. I'm going to show you uh, four easy checks on this board, cover just some basic information real quick, and then I'll let you be. Okay? So first things first, this is a uh, time temperature board, as we said. And what that means is you have to have time and temperature involved to put it into defrost and also to take it out. So what time and temperature put us in defrost? Well, first thing is you have to have a, a good, accurate coil temperature. The colder it gets outside, the faster your coil is going to freeze. So we're monitoring coil temperature with this sensor here. It's called the DFT. And we're also monitoring time. What time? It's going to be this 30, 60, or 90 minutes down here. And that is going to be watching your compressor run time. We're going to monitor when we get 24 volts to the contactor coil. 30, 60, or 90 minutes of, of run time and the right temperature, and it'll put us into defrost. Okay? Time or temperature will take us out of defrost. What temperature? Once again, it's the coil temperature. When we actually go into defrost and we start to thaw out the coil and melt the ice or frost accumulation, once that coil warms up, that signals a a, um, what's the right word? That signals that we're thawing the ice out and we don't need defrost any longer. So the switch will actually open and that temperature rising up warm enough will end defrost. Or if, if you have a problem and your defrost lasts up to 10 minutes, the board is gonna take us out of defrost in 10 minutes, okay? So let's go over a couple checks real quick on this board. I've got my voltmeter off to the side. And first thing you gotta do for this board to do its job, you gotta have power. So we gotta check power. I'm gonna take a little piece of thermostat wire and I'm gonna stick over here in, in the common um, at the main plug. And I'm also gonna stick one in the R at the main plug. Uh, if I can get it in there. There we go. This board does not have to have 24 volts on R and C in order for the compressor contactor to pull in, but it does have to have it to run defrost. So we're gonna check R to C, all right? I don't like jamming these large leads in the back of these plugs. Uh, you can mess up some wiring on that, but you can also buy uh, another lead kit that has smaller ends in it. So you check power to the board just like that. You have to have power to do defrost. The next thing we're gonna check is time. How do we check that compressor runtime to make sure the board is, is gathering it or watching it like it should? There's this T1 terminal up here, okay, uh, in this second plug. It's on this yellow and blue striped wire right here. That wire is connected straight from the contactor and it sends power back into the board on T1. So we're gonna put up here and take our little red wire extension there and we're gonna check to see if this board is gathering time on T1, and it is 25 volts, all right? So we've checked power, we've checked your compressor time, your, your run time going back into the board on T1. What's next? Well, temperature. You gotta check this temperature switch, and there's two ways to do that. One is by voltage. Voltage is coming out of that board, down to the sensor, right here on this left wire all the time. 24 seven, 365. If that board has power, then that sensor is going to have power at the uh, uh, coming out of the board sitting on it. It's waiting for the coil temperature to drop cold enough so it can send it back. So this board, right, we're going we're gonna to put it in uh, our little piggyback wire here. We're going to put that in and we're going to check R to common. And you can see we got 25 volts leaving the board going out to the sensor 
And if the sensor is closed, then it will come back on the other wire. So we're going to check this second wire. And I'm going to put my voltmeter again. And you can see I've got nothing. What that means is the switch is open. Open switches don't pass power. Closed switches do. So simple voltage check on the second pin back to common will tell you if the switch is open or not. Another way you could check it is to take the plug off while the unit's running. And I don't like to do this, but you could check the, the uh, continuity. You could turn your meter to continuity. All right. And you could actually take those little pieces of thermostat wire and put in the, the back end of the plug and check your continuity with your two leads to it. If it beeps, then it's a closed switch. If it doesn't, then it's an open switch. All right, I'm gonna plug that back on. Put my meter back to voltage. The last thing I'm gonna do is uh, check pressure switches. Let's say you come up to a unit that's not running and has this particular board on it and is one of the Bryant carrier, you know, pain or Heil type units. Um, how do you check pressure switches? Well, we do it with voltage as well. So I'm going to leave my common right here. And where Y goes into the board, it comes right back out on this yellow with a pink stripe wire. So I can check 24 volts to make sure that my voltage is leaving the board to go to the contactor. And it is. All right. If you follow this around, and there's a, a big gang of wires over here, but you'll find where the low pressure switch meets the high pressure switch and it changes the color of the wire. You can check at that junction right there to see if the pressure switch is closed and the voltage has made it through. And I've got 25 volts right at the connection between my low and high pressure switch. The high pre that wire leaving the low pressure switch where they uh, junction at is going into the high pressure switch. When it comes out, it connects to the coil of the contactor. So I can check all the way at the contactor coil now and you can see I've got 25 and a half or so volts so that means that voltage left the board, went all the way through both pressure switches and wound up at the contactor coil. If my unit wasn't running because the contactor didn't pull in, I would probably turn the power off and ohm out the contactor coil once I removed those wires on it because you probably have an open contactor coil. So I hope this helps. Uh, leave me a comment. You can subscribe if you like. I do this because I want to help you guys out. Um, it's that simple. So uh, if you have any questions on the time temperature board, hit me up, let me know. Be glad to help you. Thanks.